Hey everybody, I hope it's working. If you've ever been to this channel, you know that I struggle with live broadcasts. Sometimes they kick in, sometimes they don't kick in. I'm waiting to see if this one kicks in. Looks like it's working. I see a commercial playing. That's a good sign. Okay, so today we are going to talk about the first hand, the first footage, the whole thing. We got to play with the firmware uh, 2.0, they're calling it. Calling it 2.0, we got to play with it. We shot a short film with it. We connected with it. We did all kinds of great stuff with it. We're very excited to have it on board and to have you on board to watch it with us. I did wanna, before we jump totally into it, I'm gonna post a link in the bottom of the show notes so you can go back and look. We obviously live on the Gulf Coast. The weather is fairly bad here. We're dealing with uh, Hurricane Harvey. We're not dealing with it as bad as, as those in Texas. So it, if you have a chance and you're feeling generous, just check the link below. It goes to a fund that will um, get them money, get them needs, supplies, whatever they need. Uh, we just really want to, our, our hearts go out to their families and, and, and we're thinking about them. They're in our prayers and we just want to take a moment just to give them uh, a shout out to try and help them the best we can. We also would like to thank Panasonic for helping us uh, get this whole project together. Um, Matt over there and Sean and everybody at Panasonic has been just a delight to work with uh, as we figured out how to put this together. So before I talk any further, I think you should probably see this. I'm one of the lucky ones. It's pretty much what our world looks like now. Mostly empty. So, I got nobody else to talk to. It all started on a Wednesday. By the weekend, everything changed. I do remember my dad saying something about a virus crossing kingdoms from plant to man. Yeah, he passed. But before he did, he gave me a couple of maps. It said there were treasures, heirlooms he called them, scattered around the US. He said I should find them because they came from a government seed vault. So, I just follow the maps. Frankly, I ain't got a choice. My food source is running slim and all. I can tell you this, when the world ends, there ain't much to do. This is how I live my apocalypse. All right, there it is. That's uh, shot on the new firmware. That was shot on a Panasonic GH5 with version 2.0 firmware. We had a little bit of pre-production firmware, so ours was called 1.D or something, I don't remember. But that is the content, that is the trailer. Uh, there was a full 10 minute feature that we shot. Um, all those lens flares, yeah, are natural. None of that's fake. Nope, it's 100% real lens flares. There is no, the only VFX in this is only the gunshots, which, you know, gunshots are gunshots. I just don't like live guns on set. So that is 6K, 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 not hacking it, not running it through photo mode. That is 6K high resolution anamorphic. They're calling it high res anamorphic. I'm saying it's 6K high res anamorphic, but the technology term is high res anamorphic that is it. That is what is that has come out through the box. The grading pattern, we shot it in V-Log for a reason um, so that we could then make an HDR version. If you have an HDR, go to Best Buy if you don't own one. Get them to show it to you in HDR because I'm telling you, it is a completely different experience. It is mind-blowing. We 
nearly killed ourselves in the process uh, to get the HDR down. And that's not Panasonic. They delivered exactly what they said, beautiful looking images. We got what we needed. The post process to get the HDR, complete different story. Now let's talk about what's so exciting about the 6K because I only have 26 more minutes left before I have to go to a meeting with the client. I think that's gonna go well, I'm gonna be hyped up. So uh, it does have a de-squeeze function inside the camera and it is awesome. It bailed me and Jeff out. One of the things that we ran into, a little challenge we ran into, you might've heard us talk in the past about the Shogun having some problems. Well, for whatever reason, when with this particular piece of firmware, the, the HDMI output didn't work. So just it, hopefully they fix that or change it, but for us, it didn't work. So Jeff had to pull focus on that little bitty screen de-squeezed. I mean, we're talking about that screen with that you know, to shoot a D squeeze and Jeff did a fantastic job. It was a lot of measurements. We might've been soft in a couple spots, but it's pretty darn hard to pull it on that, especially anamorphic low light, the way we were doing things. So it has a D squeeze function. It now has crop marks built into the camera. Why is that important for, for anamorphic? Well, cause we wanted to frame up 239. So we actually use the crop marks to frame up 239. Chat, I will get to you, I promise guys. We did not use an external recorder. We used an internal recorder because of the frame size. An external recorder would not take that size of footage. So, uh, just to answer somebody in there. It was absolutely insane. So the D-Squeeze works amazing. Hopefully it'll kick out over HDMI. If that's the case, it's the biggest game changer we've come across. We also shot some red versus, uh, red anamorphic with the same lens versus GH5 with the anamorphic same lens. And the test results are absolutely insane. We'll show those coming up. So if you're not a subscriber, I suggest you do. If you wanna see all the firmware, we have a first hands look at all of the new GH5 firmware features. We're gonna show you more. In fact, at 10 o'clock central, a video will pop up that is an HLG video. Now, now, for those of us that don't have an HLG TV, which needs to be a Sony or a Samsung or an LG, it's gonna look okay. I mean, I shot it in the office, right? But if you have one, you get to see a whole new level of color depth and insanity. That said, get to Best Buy, get yourself or, or, or borrow a TV, go where you gotta go to watch this stuff in HDR if you can. You've gotta watch the short in HDR, it is insane. Multiple locations, multiple lighting environments. We shot in a cave, there's little to no noise with, with minimal noise correction. It is absolutely insane what we're able to pull off. So that's the biggest thing, because that's what we focused on the most. We got to spend our time, thanks to our, our executive producer, Matt Frazier, we got to spend our time focusing on Create and Sean. Sorry, Sean. Robinson. Uh, we got to spend our time focusing on making a 6K anamorphic short film. They were the, be they're the best client or whatever, not even a client, best relationship you could ever have. They just turned us loose and supported us the entire way. So I got to praise the heck out of them. I have fallen more in love with Panasonic, not because they helped us do something, but literally because from an artist perspective, they let us do the story. They asked for a very small short. I gave them 10 minutes. We shot a 10 minute short film and handed it over. It's in HDR, 6K, high res anamorphic. Now, you're probably wanting to see some other stuff, so I have that for you, and we will touch on some of those. Um, and I'll go over some more of the features, but the big ones for the 6K high res anamorphic function, or they're just calling it high res anamorphic, is it's got D-squeeze built in, it's got crop marks. You can do 4-3 crop marks, so in, oh, and, and the D-squeeze function allows you, so let's say you're shooting a 1-3-3 anamorphic lens, it allows that. Let's say you're shooting a two times like we did, it allows that. I don't wanna sound like a used car salesman, but hot damn, it is bad ass. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys some footage. I'm gonna try and get some other footage. Jeff shot some really killer stuff in Washington. Granted, it's raining where both of us are. It's absolutely insane. So I'm gonna show you some footage. So what we're about to see is this stuff. So this is shot, uh, hopefully it plays okay over YouTube. I'll post the link up so you guys can look at it. But this is all eye footage. This is all eye. I shot it in log and I just threw the uh, Panasonic GH4 LUT. So I'm not the colorist. You guys know that. Jeff is not here to do this. So what I wanted to show is just the clarity of it. Uh, I mean, I didn't do any work. I literally dropped a LUT on and why I'm fanning out over it is this is log, dropped the LUT on and I had range for days. I graded some of the shots myself. I didn't I don't know what I'm doing, that's Jeff's job. But I wanted to show you guys the detail in the highlights and all, all over the place. Again, YouTube live stream is not the best place to reveal it. I'll make sure to post these, these videos up so you guys can see. I'm gonna let it loop so we can keep talking about it. But basically the footage itself and what you're seeing is 100% um, all eye. It works fantastic. You are going to need a high speed card. So if you have not seen them, I'm gonna switch back to me for one second so I can show you guys. So we're using Oh, 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 there you go. So we're using these Panasonic cards that they were gracious enough to loan us because you are going to need, am I good? Am I good, Trev? Trev, am I good? 
you're going to need these high speed cards. We tried it on um, our other ones and it didn't work out so well. So these uh, are the way to go 110%. The V90 cards, you have to have V90, nothing else will work. I can promise you, unless something changes between the release date and this, um, you desperately need V90 cards. They work like a champ. Uh, the Panasonic ones worked great. Uh, we did use a competitor's brand as well as a backup because we had so much footage we were doing um, and we were doubling everything down. So when we were shooting for 6K anamorphic, but for all I, it will not work without having those cards in play. So let's go back to some all I footage. If I can get it to work. Yes, I'm just so jacked. Do you realize like this is like straight up competing on the same level? Did it, uh, no, I, yeah, half the time I use the GFI just for D-squeeze and D-squeeze. Like, uh, what about autofocus? Uh, hold on for the autofocus. Don't worry, I got you covered. I did the best I could. I'm not an autofocus, guys. I'm just reading the, the comments here. Did the 2.0 fix the exposure bug when shooting a variable frame rate with shuggle? You know what? I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna take a snapshot of this and I'll do a test, custom test just for you, cats and Mark. Uh, 51 megapixels across using high res anamorphic, so not true K, but it's damn close. Yeah, I mean, it's damn close. Um, I think the Panasonic cards are coming out in the States. I think. Um, I might have gotten myself in trouble right there. I don't know. Whatever. I'm just telling you guys the truth. Um, I had an NDA. I signed it, and they said the embargo was up, so I'm assuming I can say what I need to say. Um, and, and they've been so awesome. I don't know why they'd be upset. Anyway, I did take a picture of that, Cats and Mark. So, this stuff, it looks great, it works well, you guys. Once you get it in your hands, you're gonna destroy the world. I promise you, it is uh, fantastic. So I shot this, I don't think I had the internal stabilizer on, if anybody was asking, only because we've been moving our cameras around and we had to mark which camera was firmware updated and all that stuff, and I may have made a mistake. Uh, and not turning the, not mistaken, the, the firmware side, I know I was using that, but I might have made a mistake in the, um, in turning, I might have just had the lens, the OIS on and not the internal on. So it still all works. That all's there. That's just that's just me throwing up footage. So somebody was asking about autofocus. So here is a little bit of that. Um, I do a little talking in it, so I'll try and be quiet here, and then we can talk through it, and I'll turn it back off and cycle again. So here is, to answer any autofocus questions, let me go back to me for one beat just to set the, the measure straight. So this is gonna be about autofocus. So here's the autofocus test. I don't use it, I tried to set it up. You guys probably know how to set it better than I can, so let me know, and, uh, and we, can, we can test it from there. But here is some autofocus. Yeah, I'm not sure. I have no idea if it's working or not. So we'll just test it and see, and that's all I can do. Again, autofocus, not my jam does seem to work somewhat, but I'm sure somebody with more capable autofocus desires will understand it better than I will. Let's get Dino in the shot. Look at him trying to duck out of the frame. Try it, try it. But... Let me see if the autofocus works. Maybe it doesn't like you. <laughs> it doesn't, oh, 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 oh. It kind of likes you. That's the cockeyed thing. It can't figure out which out of tray. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not a drone. Just walk in the autofocus. Maybe we'll see what happens if we stop in front of this thing, let's say. Maybe you were shooting and you wanted to get a close-up of that. Down to the box. Down to those. Back to that. Yeah, so here is me testing that again. Uh, switching between them. I, I don't know exactly what everyone's looking for for autofocus, so post in the comments what you want me to test, because I, I, again, I don't use autofocus. Not being a jerk, I just don't use it. It's not part of my kit. Um, I have Jeff. Jeff is my autofocus. He has a beard that even wraps around the wheels and pulls the focus for him. So this is what I thought to test the autofocus on that side of it. I just kind of moved between objects like I saw other vloggers and people like that doing. Um, so I'm not totally sure if that's what you guys need, if that helps. It did seem faster from the last time I did it, but it, there were, you know, again, I don't know what people are looking for in autofocus, so I can only say, yeah, I'm not sure. To me. I can only say um, what I can say, which is, uh, you know, I don't know what the heck I'm doing with autofocus. That's not my, my space, really. Um, I'm, I'm a pull focus kind of guy, but it did seem to bounce between. I was able to get it to bounce between Dr. Teeth and um, the Snow Stormtroop, or I'm sorry, Prototype Boba Fett. So it did move, move between Dr. Teeth and Prototype Boba Fett. Uh, it worked really, really, really well, and it worked pretty flawlessly. Um, it does look better, Harvey. Yeah, I would say that it does feel better. Um, no, there's some optimal presets, but it did seem to snap faster. You can actually change the speed at which it snaps, and maybe I didn't have it set very well, um, but there is a function to do that. Um, you know, so I, I, you know, 
I can't grow a beard. <laughs> Harvey, you just, armchair is not here, so you just got quoted the day. Harvey Mullins, ladies and gentlemen, talking about pulling focus, can't grow a beard in reference to Jeff. Um, so yeah, so the autofocus thing seemed to work okay. Uh, it worked for what I was doing. I could walk around with it and hold it up. Uh, I didn't edit that aside from putting Dino in there for fun. And you saw I had to back up a little bit. I think I was a little too close on the throw of the lens. Um, there's that. So time code, Jamie, not yet. There's no TC yet. So we still have to use the audio gimmick for the time code. I forget what that thing's called. I think you're the one that told me about it, Jamie. I don't remember. Somebody told me about it. But the time code gimmick does not yet work. So, uh, or the time code is not in the camera rather. And so you have to use the time code gimmick to make it work, I should say. Um, so anything you guys want to see, let us know. We'll test it and go with it. Cool would be to test the new presets when it drops. Any word on release? Um, I, I don't actually know the release date. I'm sure Sean if, or Matt, if you happen to be watching, or you know what, I'll ask them. There he is, armchair. Or I mean, I'm sorry, amateur, AMG's back. Uh, 48 frames at 4K, no, um, not yet, I wish. Josh, you know that that's my obsession is 48 frames at 4K, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Let me double check. Um, and just in case there's any question of my validity in doing this, just wanna show you guys the menu. I'm gonna do a whole menu video, but just so you know, it's legit. Where am I? Hello. It is 100% legit. I'm not just some troll trying to get views. I worked my butt off, as did Jeff, as did our amazing crew. Um, let me go to 4K MOV. No, it does not look like it. Uh, it does not look like 48 frames is in there. Um, I have, I've dug through the menus best I could. I'll do, once we do the menu thing, we'll do a more extensive. That should be coming out within the next day or so. We're gonna bomb the channel with content because it's exciting and they were nice enough to let us play with it. So um, uh, you wanna go over them. Let's do one more thing and I'll recap all of the features at once, right? So I wanna do one more thing and, and then we'll show the trailer again. But you can also post to the trailer and links. Panasonic Lumix channel just dropped it. They dropped two pieces. So if you're curious about a different style of shooting, not necessarily as cinematic as ours or, or the style that we went after, there's also a whole nother channel on HLG. So they, they delivered an HLG, which is a feature. But remember the panning issue. Let's talk about the panning issue because I shot a little quick test yesterday um, using the panning. Pardon the rain, that's what it is. So here's some panning. It is noticeably better, but there's still a little bit of a judder. It's it's there. I mean, it, it is what it is. I think it has to do with the camera, but it is noticeably better. I do know that, um, and again, I'm trying to break it at this point. I'm panning poorly on purpose, but I, I did notice it does get better here on the six second pan or five se or six second pan. Um, it's considerably controlled. So it worked a lot better. If you guys are just joining in, we are literally w looking at four two or looking at the new ProRes footage. Our new Pro. Good God, what a drunk I am! I shouldn't have been drinking since this morning. We are looking at the new Panasonic firmware update, version 2.0. First, uh, hands-on first look. It's way better. Um, it is. I'm gonna post all of this footage up raw so you guys can look at it. It'll just maybe I'll throw a music bed under it so it's not super annoying. I'll post all the footage up raw so you can kind of see it and or you know encode it for YouTube. But I'll post it up there so you guys can look at it. Maybe I'll throw a link up so you can download. Would you guys want some download footage? I can just post these pictures up and let you download it and um, and let you go from there if you want to. All right. So to recap what we're talking about. So we in version 2.0 Panasonic firmware version 2.0 for the GH5. Uh, there have been some fixes to autofocus. We haven't thoroughly tested them. That's not totally our jam, but there are some. We'll do more testing. I took a screenshot to do the exact test you want. By the way, throw it in the talk box over here. Tell me what you want to uh, to get in there. How good is the 400 megabytes? I'm just going to talk and show you. Again, YouTube compression here. This will loop, guys. YouTube compression here. All I did was shoot log, throw a lot on it. It looks even better in standard. Um, if you want to see what that is, the standard version of it is actually the little uh, autofocus test. That was all shot eye frame um, or uh, eye, all eye, sorry, shot all eye in um, with standard color picture profile. And I'll switch over to that in a second as well. I'll make sure the audio is off. And so you guys can see variations on the different looks. So that's what we had there is log. All I did was throw the Panasonic GH4 LUT on it. I'm not a colorist, that's Jeff's world. So we just threw it on there. So it does have the all eye 400 meg. It's fantastic, absolutely loved it. Got to play with it. It has crop marks. 
Um, inside the camera now, you can set your crop marks. It has de-squeeze for anamorphic. It shoots 6K high-res anamorphic or just at 6K high-res anamorphic. Um, it has de-squeeze in it. It also allow you to do a 4.3 crop mark, which means you can use 1.3.3 lenses or two-time anamorphic lenses. But there's one thing I haven't talked about, which will drop later that I'm super stoked about as we go over the feature list. Guys, it has HLG built into the camera. The camera actually encodes in, in an HDR format. If you don't know the difference, we'll talk about them quickly. HLG is the broadcast equivalent of HDR10. HDR10 is what you're seeing your Netflix programming in. When you see it in HDR, it is HDR10. HLG is the broadcast equivalent. So HDR10 has a little more range to it. I think it's, it's I don't remember the exact number, but HLG is just below that number. What's fun is you can actually shoot in camera HLG, plug it into the back of your television that supports HLG, which right now is Sony, LG, and Samsung, maybe some others, but those are the three I know work. And then you can upload directly to YouTube HLG, so you now have HDR footage hitting the internet, boom, that fast. Editing it is the whole problem. You can't edit HLG, Adobe doesn't support it. It's a whole workaround process that we will show you a tutorial coming up soon. Make sure you subscribe if you're not, but we'll show you a tutorial on how to deal with HLG because it is a little bit of a nightmare. Trust me, 7.30 a.m. to midnight every single day since we wrapped that project. So for almost two and a half weeks, we've been in the edit bay figuring it out. It's crazy. And big shout out to Mystery Box for the help on that. So it has a new HEVC codec built into it. So you're shooting an H265, looks amazing. You're gonna need that for your HLG playback or for your HLG encode. When you're, when you're shooting stuff. The HLG profile itself, it has a specific color profile, and it also has a couple of modes that allow you to uh, switch between um, a highlight protection mode and a, and, a, and a skin tone protection mode, so you can kind of mix them up that way. Um, it also has built-in viewing tools that will actually kick out over HDMI, and so we haven't tested that yet because we didn't shoot HLG, we shot log and then did HDR10 conversion, but it has those. We'll have that coming out, a test on that that should kick it out to your Flame or your Inferno, which makes an external recorder even more awesome if you're doing 4K content, so specifically 4K. You can kind of see what it looks like. It's not gonna fix your editing problem, but at least you can monitor it correctly. The All Eye Kodak is a huge deal. The D-Squeeze is a huge deal for those of us. It does not yet have time code. Autofocus seems to be more stable and acting snappy. I'm going to the talk box. My God, you guys are killing me. I love you. Is there anything you wanna see, guys? I, I Join us every week, by the way, not to shamelessly plug, but we work hard and this community that's in here, we got Trev, I see a lot of our Jeff's in, I see AMG or amateur media groups here, we got a lot of our, our regulars. This group is fantastic if you have questions, just, you don't have to listen to me, mute me and just sit in the talk box and have a conversation in the live chat. I promise you'll learn more from it than anything else. Um, 10 bit 60, I did not see it in the menu frame, no. Um, the H265 is pretty rad though. Uh, the autofocus, yeah, I'll show it one more time so you guys can also see standard color profile. So this is all I, 400 megabits, standard co uh, uh, color profile. I have no idea if it's working or not. So we'll just test it and see, and that's all I can do. Again, autofocus, not my jam. It does seem to work somewhat, but I'm sure somebody with more capable autofocus desires will understand it better than I will. Let's get Dino in the shot. Look at him trying to duck out of the frame. Try it, try it. But... Let me see if the autofocus works. Maybe it doesn't like you. <laughs> It doesn't. Oh, 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 oh. It kind of likes you. That's the cock eye thing. It can't figure out which eye to tray. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not drone. Just walk in the autofocus. Maybe we'll see what happens if we stop in front of this thing. Let's say maybe you were shooting and you wanted to get a close up of that. Down to the box. Down to those. Back to that. See, that's what happens when I run the show and I get all hyped up. Sorry about the no audio. That, that whole segment was uh, basically just footage. I recorded on the camera, so I'll upload it later or something. But what I was saying was that was all, all that footage was 
Um, uh, that was all I footage. So that was the, using the new format. Also showing an autofocus test for anybody that, w that wondered. Sorry about the audio, guys. Again, it's hard to switch and do all this stuff at the same time, and I'm trying to edit as we go to show you guys as much content as we possibly can um, within the window of time I have, because I have a client meeting in six minutes I have to leave for. So any questions in the, in, in the talk box over here? Um, what do you guys need? What do you want? What are you looking for? Anything in here? Um, anybody? I know autofocus is a question. You want to see the trailer again? We can watch that again. That's the anamorphic stuff. Um, and then I'll just maybe give you, let me change the audio on it. And I'll just give you a little uh, running director's commentary um, as we go. So is the audio still working? Yes, it's still working. All right. So as you can see, this is 2.0. This is presented in HDR, obviously not HDR in this stream. This is a 1080p 30 stream. Uh, we worked uh, multiple locations for this. We shot on a, an Ingenue 30 to 72 uh, two time anamorphic lens. We shot in 6K high res anamorphic um, and went through the process. So, if you have a chance and you have an HDR capable television, uh, I really, really suggest you check it out in HDR. It is crazy the detail level. In fact, it's like going from standard def to 4K. It's like skipping HD altogether. It's a beautiful thing. So, we took this camera in caves. We treated it like a cinema camera and did everything we could. And we've talked about that if you've seen one of the other episodes. So, this again is all 6K. Uh, proper lighting, uh, full crew, kind of dressing it up as well as we could. Um, yeah, the cards. So the Lexar cards that we have the and the SanDisk cards that are V not V90, any card that's not V90 does not work. So as you're watching this trailer footage, any card that is not V90 does not work for the all iframe. It did okay for the 6K. Is that right, Jeff? Can you comment, Jeff, on the, on the cards with 6K? I'm not totally sure, but but as far as iframe goes, the 400 megabits per second, it didn't work. Didn't work at all. Didn't hold up. Um, it didn't do anything. So we shot on Panasonic uh, V90 cards and another brand. I can't remember the name of them, but they were V90 cards. We shot on both of those. We tested them. They worked great. They were fantastic. They're a little pricey, but they did exactly what they wanted to do. That's actually 4K slow mo that we were able to pull in, into anamorphic or. 4K anamorphic slow-mo, 60 frames that we were able to convert to HDR, that slow-mo shot of him walking that looks like a bad rip-off cover of Uncharted, hint, hint. Um, yeah, it is so sharp. That's one of the that's one of the big challenges. I'm glad somebody noticed that. One of the craziest things is, is when you guys see this in HDR, it is so sharp. The cave, watch the cave. We purposely shot in low light environments, in harsh environments. We didn't make just a short film that thought was interesting. Watch it for the story the first, first time. And then the second time you watch it, make sure you pay attention to how we gave the shots. Cause we thought about you. We thought about the community, what we would want to know, the questions we wanted and, and autofocus wasn't one of them. But, but the other questions were, how is it going to handle all of this content? Uh, how's it going to handle low light? How's it going to handle this? And it worked like a champ. It is almost too sharp. I've had the same conversation with Matt that it feels just a pinch on the sharp side. Um, and it gets a little bit crazy uh, when it when it comes down to it. The, the the sharpness is just I mean it's 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 nuts. Like luckily Jeremy has good skin. He's gonna love that I said that. But like if your actress has to require or actor has to require a lot of makeup, if anybody in this space requires the make I don't know what this means. If anybody needs makeup, it's going to show. So be very conscious of how you shoot when you start shooting with this really high clean high res glass and, and going in that space. Um, the all eye stuff, like I said, at 10 o'clock, an HLG clip will drop. I'll probably post another one today so you guys can get this raw footage. I just have to go to this client meeting. So I'll do my best to post that up. Obviously, you can go back and look at it here. I'll see if I can maybe just post this stuff directly up, no music, um, right before I leave. I'll just throw it together and you guys can see some of the early footage. Again, just to preface, when you see some of the shots, when you see DC, if it looks like DC, Jeff shot it and, and had a little bit of time to toy with it. Everything else, that I did was either standard pro color profile or was just the GH4 Rec 20 or yeah, the GH4 Rec 709 LUT dropped on top of it because I'm no colorist and I, I'm, I'm here to just show baseline standards and be the talking face. Um, why vlog over HLG? Because the workflow on HLG uh, did not allow us to do an HDR 10 and we wanted to deliver an HDR 10. Um, that that's me and Jeff's preferred HDR flavor. Uh, though it's awesome that you can shoot HLG in camera, we wanted to shoot HDR 10 and that's the workflow that we understood the closest and gave us the most latitude. 
Well, I, I mean, subs are subs, you know. I, I, hopefully, that's cool, but we really just want the community to grow. To us, it's more about getting more information in the community. Um, it's a non-hostile community and it's happy people. So the one thing about this channel and this group, Craft Show is no longer me and Jeff, and I don't want you guys to ever think it's me and Jeff. Craft Show is me, Jeff, and every single person that joins us every week that sits down to have a conversation that's willing to communicate fluidly and clearly with others. That is what we're after. If we are filmmakers helping filmmakers, that is so much more important than anything else. That is that is what Craft Show really stands for. It just so happens we all like the same camera most of the time. It just so happens we all want to learn all of the time. So that's who we are. So. You know, if the subs reflect that, great. I just hope it's subs in the sense that it's a great community coming in and that, you know, we're able to keep it positive and fluid and happy because that's really, this is this is what we do for a living. It's pro level, so that's what we do. All right, just to touch on the features one more time, this was a, a, a version of just showcasing some of the amazing new uh, features inside of the V2 firmware that we're excited about. We talked about a couple of the little challenges. We'll go in depth on the challenges because I think that's worth exploring, but it has high-res anamorphic 6K, 16 by nine, uh, or sorry, it has crop marks now featured that you can use for that anamorphic or your regular videos. Uh, the crop marks are both 16 by nine and 4.3 in case you want to shoot 1.3.3 or 2X anamorphic lenses. Uh, the all-eye codec looks amazing. Um, it's 400 megabits per second. It, it's absolutely outstanding. It has the HEVC codec built in now. It's a new feature added on. We're going to show a video at 10 that, that showcases that. Oh my gosh, I have to go. Um, it shoots HLG, which is a flavor, a broadcast flavor of HDR. Uh, editing it's a little bit of a pain and getting it to convert right, but you can shoot pull your card out, plug it into a TV and watch your HDR content or upload directly to YouTube, straight off the camera, up to YouTube. Uh, don't change anything because it'll mess it up, but you can upload it straight to YouTube and get uh, HLG footage up there. There's a HLG profile inside to help you shoot. It's got helpers in it, what we're calling helper tools, which are highlight control and mid control also included in it. It's got uh, additional viewing tools that will output over the HDMI and lots more, but those are the ones I wanted to touch on for this particular thing. At 10 o'clock, a video will drop from us uh, that's an HLG video that's up. There's also on the Panasonic Lumix channel, USA channel, or all their channels, I believe, you can see the trailer in 4K. You can also see, more importantly, the trailer in 4K HDR. Uh, you can also see the, the another bit of footage they did that was uh, HLG that they shot in Europe. So you can see that as well, and that'll be in HLG format and 4K. Um, so if the color looks a little different, uh, when you can see the fork, the HDR version, you'll know why. Please try and watch this in HDR. Please go seek out a TV that has HDR10 capabilities. Go to Best Buy, pull it up on every TV, snap a photo and show it because that's super rad because we're, not me and Jeff, we're, this whole group, everybody here, we are the people that are going to be the innovators because we're the ones using the camera. So let's start breaking the world in a great way. All right, I, I literally have to go. Jeff, I'll call you in a minute. I have to go talk to a client. I'm all riled up. Hugs, high fives. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, talk about it. Meet us in the comments. We'll post the videos. We're always here. Uh, the live show is always Tuesdays at 2 p.m. when we can. We even do it on the road. Sometimes ghetto rig, but whatever. We make it happen. If you want to have, if you have questions, join us in the community. Uh, we'll be there. All right, I'm out. See ya. I got to click the buttons. Yes. Thank you guys so much. Version two.